Okay, so I'm trying to upload that first response, and now I'll, I'll go further, if that works. I'm just having, like I said, I'm having technical difficulties. Matt Dillahunty. The, on some level, Matt Dillahunty, I know who he is, I've listened to some of his videos. I didn't know he, that he was a, you know, a, a, a real believer prior to him becoming an atheist. On some level, that is inexplicable to me. I cannot explain it. I, I don't get it at all. In order for me to make even a guess, I'd have to get to know him. I'd have to talk to him for like an hour or so and try to find out what. Uh, because it makes literally no sense to me. Now, as far as you and I are concerned, it's completely irrelevant. I mean, yeah, you bring up two people who used to be atheists or used to be Christians and now they're atheists. I could bring up, you know, 600 pastors who used to be atheists and now are Christians. Kirk Cameron. <laughs> I know you know who Kirk Cameron is. He used to be an atheist. Now he's, you know, Mr. Christian. So there you go. I'm not bringing him up and say, look, that proves that God's real. So, you know, whatever you're trying to say with Matt Dillahunty, it's irrelevant. I can't explain it. I'll give you that. I can't explain it. And on some level, it's horrifying to me because it's, it's deeply scary. Um, the, two things that are important I want to bring up. You say, the first thing is the difference between faith and knowledge, okay? I do not have faith in God. You were using that term wrong when you talked to me about faith. Faith, I have knowledge of God. Okay, I know you don't believe that, but I'm telling you the truth. God is as real to me as the ocean. The ocean I can, I, is right there, I can see it. I can see it from my window of my apartment. I live on the beach. It's right there. The, God is as real to me as the ocean. I don't have faith in God. I don't have faith and that's why I think God is real. I know God is real because he has made himself as real to me as the ocean. Okay, now faith is still something I need in life. I know you don't believe that, but that's the truth. Faith is something I use in life to try and access the power of God to accomplish things in this world. Now, I still suck at that. I, that requires some education, some knowledge. It requires a lot. And I'm still not very good at that. Okay? Um, that's what faith is. Faith is something actively being used in life. Like, I pray for this and have faith that it happens. Or I pray, you know, to accomplish this using the power of God. That's faith. I'm still not very good at that. That requires a lot. It requires knowledge. It requires all sorts of different things. And I am still not very good when it comes to faith. God, my knowledge of God being real, is absolute knowledge. Okay, you can say I'm wrong, but you can't say that it's faith. It's not faith. I don't, I don't have faith that the ocean exists. I can see it. I, I know that the ocean exists. That's exactly how much I know that God is real. I know that God exists. Period. You can say I'm wrong, but it's not faith. Faith is, you know... I'm going to now pray and believe God to do this. And I can't always do that. I can't always access the power of faith correctly. That's one point. Point number two, with the Apostle Paul, it's, you start to get into an area that's, that's really, really interesting to me, but it's very, very complicated. It's hard to address everything that that brings up in a three-minute video. And apparently I can't make anything more than a five-minute video because my phone starts to conk out. So... Suffice it to say this, uh, the Apostle Paul, yes, God sovereignly introduced himself to the Apostle Paul. Now, I personally believe that that is going to happen to a lot of people who are atheists, who are non-believers. God is going to sovereignly introduce himself to them in some way that they absolutely know it's God, so that before they die, they come to know God. Whether that's on somebody's deathbed or not, I have no idea. But the fact that he did it sovereignly to Paul makes me think that he will do it sovereignly to millions. I'm not talking about that either. There are other people who are not in the Bible who God demonstrated his power just as convincingly and they're not in the Bible because they still reject it. Now that's kind of where I'm going. You talk about the unicorn in the backyard. I'm not saying there's a unicorn in the backyard and I can prove it to you. I'm saying there's a unicorn in the backyard and not necessarily you, but it's been proven to your friends time and time again. But they have rejected the evidence of the unicorn in the backyard. 
Now, I don't know if you completely understand that, but don't respond to it different than what I intend, okay? What I was trying to get out with this video, with the first video, is ultimately a much more complicated issue than you realize. I'm trying to tell people